Well, hello, boys and girls, and welcome to Croy Valley Live. Hey, we're back. We are back. We are coming to you live from Croy Valley headquarters in beautiful Hudson, Wisconsin. And it has been a minute, hasn't it, Lou? It's been a couple minutes. It's been about three years, actually. I don't know how many minutes that is, but it has been a very, very long time since we've gone live. And we are so excited to be back with you guys tonight. I mean, extremely excited. We are. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous. I can't lie. It's been a while. I'm a little out of practice here. And it's really different for us this time. It, it's very different. I have been the one in the past to be responsible for monitors and cameras and switching things around. And that's not the case anymore, is it? It is not the case. We have got super master, wonderful Clint back there handling all of those things for us. Check out Clint Cam. Clint there he Cam. is. There he is. Behind the <laughs> scenes, <laughs> handling all of the, the this and that. And, and I tell you, really can't be more excited to be live with you again. I mean, we're in a brand new space since the last time we went live. We right? are, yeah, we built this out just to do this. So we better start doing this, right? No doubt. I mean, we this this is our new studio. This is the Croy Valley Studios in our new facility. We've been in here for about a year now. And, uh, and you know, here we are rocking and rolling, ready to like really take advantage of everything. And we've got an awesome show for you tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. We've got Ken and Jeff and Zach and Jeffrey, all sorts of people online right now. And, and Scott, thank you for joining us. Just cannot wait. So Lou, give a little preview. Tell everyone what we're going to be making tonight because this is a cooking show. It after is all. a cooking show. So we're going to do a couple little fun things. And we are really excited about one particular style of cooking this year. Some of you will probably guess why, and that is appetizers. Yeah, we're going to be focusing on appetizers today because we are the title sponsor of the Steak Cook-Off Association's World Ancillary Championships, which we'll get into more about later, but basically everybody has to cook some appetizer using Croy Valley products. So we're going to, we're going to focus on a couple of things here right now. Terry West says, nice studio. Melissa, uh, I don't know where she went. Uh, I, I, for, I, I can't see it any longer, but hey, <laughs> it's all good. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Tyler's joined us. Tyler has been one of our fans since the beginning. Yep. My goodness, I remember cooking in uh, Sam's Club, uh, barbecue competition in Woodbury, Minnesota, years and years ago, where they had this uh, this series, and Tyler drove all the way up from Illinois with his family just to see us, and we appreciate you, buddy. Uh, oh my gosh, everyone's like you know, long time no see, like Mike, uh, Mikey, Mikey Schilling from I think Florida <laughs> is where Mikey's from. My goodness, thank you again for joining us. So. Should we start with where we're going with our recipes tonight? We should. What, where are we going to start here, Dame? Well, let's start by putting on gloves because being sanitary is extremely important. That's right. What we're going to do is we're going to focus on two different appetizers tonight. We're going to talk about all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, Jared from New Zealand is joining us, by the way, Team Croy Valley. Thanks, Jared. There's um, my sister and Stephanie yeah, West. And it's lovely. Your mom and dad. Oh, everybody's here, you guys. I it's love, like a party. I love, love, love it. I mean, this is fantastic. We're going to put on the gloves, and we're going to talk about two different appetizers. The one thing with Croy Valley products, and this isn't a sales pitch here, but I'm going to tell you real quick. A little sales pitch. Just a tiny little sales pitch. Is that... Uh, <laughs> is that we love to be creative in what we're cooking, right? Yes. So there's a lot of creativity that can go along with some very, very base recipes. And these are things that you can make with your friends, your family, you can make them at home and you can, you can elevate them to another level by using our products. So today we're gonna to be talking about spinach and artichoke dip. Yum. And we're gonna be talking about potato potato skins. So underrated, the potato skin. I know. Like, I feel like everybody knows a potato skin from like, like Applebee's or TGI Fridays or, or you know. frozen thingies you can get. Yeah. Then, you know. But there's so much more you can do with them. Yeah. So we're going to, we're going to start by focusing on the, uh, on the spinach, spinach and artichoke, artichoke. Chip. Artichoke dip, and it's I want to show you. I mean, it is a lot of words, and I want to show you how we make them here at Croy Valley because this is all about simplicity. Okay, Steve Hughes, thanks for joining us. Dana Carlson, good evening, Croy Valley crew. He says thank you. I mean, seriously, thank you, thank There's you, thank you. <laughs> hey. 
Yay! Seriously, <laughs> uh, my, my daughter is joining us. Everyone is joining us. I love it. I love it. I love it. So let's start. Spinach and artichoke dip. By the way, uh, Clint, behind the scenes, is going to be posting these recipes at some point for you throughout the throughout the the broadcast. He'll throw them on the uh, on the. Um, Website? Uh, website. Or they're on the website right now. He's going to throw them on the broadcast so you can not only follow along, but seriously, more importantly, make them yourself come tomorrow or whatever. Spinach and artichoke dip. What do you got right here, Lou? Well, I have the artichoke part. That's my favorite part. So the artichoke hearts that Lou is using are basically just a canned artichoke heart that you would get from any grocery store. Yep. It works perfectly in this dip. It costs virtually nothing, uh, maybe a, a couple of bucks, but she's gonna dice those up a lot. And what I've got over here is I have chopped frozen spinach that has been thawed. And I wanna show you like my little trick for using spinach. Now I have to tell you, if you've been, if you've been following Croy Valley at all, I've, uh, I'm a huge proponent of the Viva signature cloth paper that. towel. Are we gonna it's, discuss those? It's the most amazing thing <laughs> for cleaning up after a cook, you know that, but it's super durable as well. So I put, you can use a cheesecloth here, but I put my spinach inside a Viva signature cloth paper towel and I express all of the liquid like you see me doing right here, okay? Hashtag Team Viva. I should get a sponsorship should. from Viva signature cloth. I really should. <laughs> We get dried spinach, and we're gonna do this in about three different stages. Again, just putting this in here and expressing the liquid. Really simple to do. And then, we, and then we're gonna chop it up and throw it in with the rest of our ingredients. Which is our, our, our cream cheese right there. Okay, so Lou's got her artichoke hearts yep. with three packages of cream cheese, right? Like these are eight ounce uh, blocks of cream cheese. We've pre-softened them. And here's all of my spinach uh, right here. She, we've pre-softened that cream cheese and we're adding finely diced artichokes. This is like a, an eight ounce can. I'm gonna take all of the spinach and I'm gonna chop that up even more fine. Brandy, Brandy says, uh, Brandy had a check. She says, uh, oh, glad hi. you're back. Raceland says, hi. Hi, Raceland. Hi, Race. We know Brandy from Steak Cook-Off Association competitions. She's from Britt, Iowa, and Brandy is just the most adorable little girl. So thank Race, you for Raceland watching. Is Raceland, the Raceland's Brandy's the most. Brandy's adorable too. She is, she is. It's a little confusing doing a live stream here, especially <laughs> after three years, let me tell you. So I'm I'm gonna take all of that spinach, I'm gonna add it to the bowl with the cream cheese. Lou's gonna finish chopping up those artichokes and here are the rest of the ingredients. Oh my gosh, Andre from the Netherlands is joining us. Andre, Andre you're I have to up say, late. Thank you so much, it is 2 a.m. in the morning in the Netherlands and Andre took the time to stay up for us so I really, really, Appreciate it. He's one of our pro team members, and we, we, we'll probably talk about him a little bit a little bit later. What I've got here is a, um, a grated Parmesan Romano blend. We'll bring this up right over here. So I'm going to add the Parm Romano, and I'm going to now follow along: cream cheese, spinach, artichokes, Parmesan Romano and Croy Valley's Garlic Barbecue Booster. Use this it on everything. Especially on a spinach artichoke dip. Yep. I'm gonna put in about four tablespoons or so. And because I've got gloves on, this is one of the easiest things for me to do. I'm just gonna go ahead and mix this up with my hands. You can, you know, you don't have to get this primal about it. You can use a, a spoon or whatever. But I just want to get a nice, even mix, and it's pretty easy to do with gloved hands on. You're doing a good job. Thank you. And then we're going to transfer it into a pan that can go on either the grill or it can go in the oven. Now, today in Wisconsin here, it's uh, not too cold. No, it's nice out. But it's we've got snow. a bunch of snow on the ground. It's wonderful. So, so I'm not super interested in going outside for this live stream. 
especially because it's dark out. It's the middle of winter here for us. Yeah. I'm gonna put this in the oven. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take all of the ingredients out of here, place it in a pan, and you hear that sound? That's the sound of deliciousness. Very nice, David. Yeah. Cheers, Dan Dickey. Oh, so uh, I'm sorry, Tyler, uh, Tyler, uh, Tyler corrected me. He Madison. said it was Madison, Wisconsin. It's okay. Either get, way, we Tyler. We get confused, Tyler. I get, yes, I'm an old man these days. <laughs> but we did see you at a, uh, at a uh, Sam's Club. And again, we super appreciate you. Okay. Okay. We have the spinach and artichoke dip ready to go in the oven. That's the next step. I've got a 350 degree oven back here. And she Again, goes. you can put this on a grill, especially if you're looking for a little bit of smoke flavor. That would be absolutely fantastic. But how many ingredients was that? Four? Yeah, it's easy. Four yeah. ingredients. And I'm telling you, one of the best spinach and artichoke dips you've ever had. Now, when that comes out, we're gonna show you a couple of other preparations for it because- no, we're gonna do some stuff. You can't just leave it at that, no, can we? No, I mean, it's good on its own, no. but holy tamale, it's even better if you add a couple of Croy Valley products to it. That's right. Just saying. So just let's saying. let that do its thing. All right, so while we're, doing, while we're letting it do its thing, yeah. we can certainly talk a little bit about the potato skins okay. because there's a little bit of prep involved yeah. in potato skins, right? Yeah, gotta do a right? thing or two. Mm -hmm. yeah. So why don't, you, why don't you talk a little bit about how we prepare our potato skins. Sure. And then, and then we'll, we'll talk about more stuff that's been happening in Croy Valley land over here. All right, potato skins, super, super easy. Soften your potatoes. We just threw these in the microwave until you're kind of nice and soft. And then you're gonna cut them in half. You'll scoop out the insides of those potatoes. Save that potato, set it aside, put it in the fridge. You can make mashed potatoes out of it later, whatever. If you want to add another layer of flavor, you, you can bake these in your grill oh, or yeah. smoker. You can do them in the oven, really easy. But take a look at what Lou's doing here right now. She's just taking the spoon, kind of going around the edge. So we leave about a quarter of an inch or so yep. of flesh and then scooping out the inside. Of skin, as it were. Yeah. <laughs> now, like I said, this is very similar to, you know, what you may see as far as like preparation goes for something that you would find at like an American chain restaurant, but we're going to take it up another level for sure. Yeah. Stephanie West says that she used a lot of Croy Belly garlic booster, by the way. Oh, and we appreciate so you, Stephanie, a hundred percent. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. But while Lou's doing this, let's just talk, while everything else is going on here, let's just talk a little bit about, um, a, a, about a couple of other things that are going on in, in Croy Valley's world here, what shall we? What do you wanna talk about, Damon? Let me know. Well, you know, again, it's been a while since we went, uh, we went live. Yeah. In the last time that we did Croy Valley Live, we focused on a couple of really fun little features and, and I just want to bring them back. I want to bring them back because, man, oh man, it was a lot of fun. I think I know where he's going. And it was tasty too. I have to say, I'm getting a little thirsty. Uh-oh. And I think it's time for the Moscato Report, everybody. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. It's time for the Moscato Report. Ooh. This is the part of the show where Damon explores a brand new Moscato, never before discovered to these taste buds, because I'm a real big Moscato fan. Moscato's a nice, sweet wine, but it pairs beautifully with all sorts of different foods. So we've got a brand new Moscato tonight. This is called Bartonura. 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 It's an Italian Moscato, like most of them. Lou picked this up for me. I haven't tried it before. And I'd love to give you my feedback as to what this Moscato tastes like. Uh, a quick disclaimer, if anyone sees me in the wild in a barbecue or steak competition and you want to give me a little bottle of Moscato, I'm not going to turn it down. All right, we're going to go ahead and open this up, find out what this is all about. Now, I did a tiny little bit of research on this. Who did? Lou did because she was <laughs> really, because uh, I asked her to. 
Lou, where is this Moscato from? That is from Milan. A Moscato from Milan. Mm -hmm. All right. This is their signature Moscato. Yeah. Yep. This little blue bottle. It's gotten a lot of awards. It's supposed to be pretty good. <laughs> Lori says, mmm, Moscato. Indeed. Now, can I take, I'm going to take a quick little break here, and I'm just going to mention what you've got going over here. So you want to talk about this real quick? Sure. What real. You, you scooped out the, the, the yep. potatoes. I scooped out the little okay. guts, yep. and then I just threw them in the deep fryer here. We're going to fry them up until they're kind of a little golden brown and kind of set up. Potatoes are already cooked. We're looking to just kind of crisp them up around the edges so that they hold all that filling really, really well. Perfect. Ooh. That is a bubbly Moscato. This that is, is definitely a Moscato, Moscato de Asti, for sure. Moscato de Asti is my favorite. It's got that effervescence. It usually has a little bit of a sweet flavor. Now, if you've ever seen Croy Valley Live before, you'll know that I like most Moscatos, mm -hmm. but on occasion there's a stinker in the bunch. So I've got Hope. high hopes for your pick here, dear. Hope it's not a stinker. All right, let's find out. <sighs> Nervous. I think by saying, ah, It's good? Yeah, it's really good. Oh, good. It is really good. <laughs> this is a fantastic Moscato. I love it. Bartonura, product of Italy. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a 2022 vintage, so it's not that old. I think a young Moscato is actually better than like a vintage uh, red yeah. wine or something like that. This is super, super tasty. I know. Derek was asking if you're going to have leftovers for work tomorrow. Uh, this bottle will be gone before... <laughs> the dawn of tomorrow. Trust me, yeah. Derek. Mm, my goodness. Mm. Guys, can I try a little sip? You go right ahead. Why, thank you. This is absolutely fantastic. I love it. I thank you so much for Ooh. picking this one for me. And uh, again, it's just fun and games here at Croy Valley. If you're games. a wine enthusiast, I would certainly suggest talking to your uh, liquor store manager and seeing if you can find a Bartonura from Milan, Italy. It is super tasty. I love it. I love it. Good, good. Okay, so where are we with the potato skins? They're We're just almost, looking for golden done. brown? We're almost done. Just give okay. it. Don't rush it. Don't rush I, the process. I'm going to tell you right now, good food cannot be rushed. You've got to wait for flavors to develop. Yep. You have to wait for caramelization. You have to wait for tenderness. Whatever it happens to be, this is where we're at. So... We've got, we've got our, our spinach and artichoke dip That's in the oven. Up. These are almost done. These are almost done. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some other fun things. Um, let's see, what's next on our little list? We have we a cheat a list sheet. So we don't screw up. <laughs> we are going to talk about something I really, 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 okay. really love, and that's okay. exporting. Most of you know we do a lot of it. So we're going to give you some export updates. Oh, my goodness. I ha I, I, Lou can give the updates, but I'm going to preface this by saying, I mean, I'm sure if you're watching us, you're, you know, you followed us uh, for a while, you, you know who we are and what we're doing. But I'll tell you, one of the big successes that we've had as a company is in the exporting market. We currently export to Canada and Europe and Japan and New Zealand and Australia and, uh, and Chile. And we Chile. just started into Chile and this we're last up a new week. Market. But Ooh, yes. we really love getting our flavors into the hands of folks in international markets. Mm -hmm. So why don't you give everyone a little update, Lou, and let us know where, where we stand right now and what we've got going on. Sure thing. Okay, well, we did take a trade venture trip to Mexico. We just got back from that recently. You like that? Yeah. It's very good. And, and that's a clue about what's in my tumbler. So pay attention if you're paying attention and you want to guess later. Uh, we were in Mexico for a week with the state of Wisconsin, trying to drum up some business down there and learn more about the Mexican market. That's really our big focus this year. We want to get into Mexico, and we are, we are, we are pretty well there. We've just got to figure out a few little fine details. We'll be into Mexico. The Mexican trip was fantastic, it by really the way. Was. Not only did we meet with a lot of distributors and retailers, but we had amazing food. Oh, the food. The, we, had, we had food with, with crickets on it and, mm -hmm. and, and, and mealworms on it and, and fantastic beef and pork dishes. And I'm telling you, we weren't like down in Mexico to go sit on a beach and, and you know swim in the ocean. Nothing against that, but it was all inner country stuff. We went to um, Mexico City and, and to Monterey. Monterey and the grilling and barbecue market in those areas is just top notch. And the food at the restaurants was fantastic. 
Okay, a quick answer to Stephanie West. Yes, 350 degrees to fry your skins. Ah, there you go. Okay. And we've got 350 degrees on our oven slash grill, uh, if we were allowed to have a grill indoors, yeah. but uh, all good. Everything's, everything's chiming along at 350 right now. Yeah, so. and we did have some tequila in, uh, in Mexico, Brian. Yes. <laughs> yes, we did. Clint's flagging us down for something. What's Clint want? Uh, Brian is also chiming in over on YouTube. How many miles did you guys travel last year, roughly? Oh my God! Holy man! It, you know, I never sat down. How many? How many miles did we travel last year? We never sat down and did any calculations. But but in like recent history, trying to look at how much we traveled and where we went, just in the United States alone, yeah. we put on thousands of miles because we were back and forth to Texas multiple times. We went to Arkansas multiple times, Tennessee, uh, Alabama, South Arkansas, South Carolina. We were all over the place. And then internationally, when you take everything into account, mm -hmm. last year was uh, Paris, France, Mexico. No, last year was Germany, not Paris. Germany. Germany, the Netherlands, Mexico. I can't even keep track. Yeah. Like we wake up in the morning <laughs> and we're like, where, whose bed am I in? Yeah. Like, where are we right now? I mean, that's kind of- It's fun though. We're very lucky to be able to do that. Yeah. Very, very lucky. Super fortunate. And, and to be quite honest, we're fortunate because of folks like you who continue to help us promote the brand and believe in us and believe in what we're doing because, you know, I mean, the, the business is owned by the two of us right here. Yeah. But we have so many friends and family and supporters and fans all over the globe that are making Croy Valley continue to be successful that we we would be in these places yeah. without everyone's support. So yeah. we super, so, super appreciate it. So Mexico, we good. Yep. Um, Keep going. I'm going right. to look at my uh, uh, spinach We did mention chili. So chili we did. We're, we're exporting into chili now. We also got an e-commerce website up and running in Canada. So any of our Canadian followers can, can Canadian followers can order our products. They can get them shipped directly to them from a warehouse in Canada. They don't have to worry about all the, you know, shipping yeah. across borders. And then lastly, we are going into a magazine up in the Netherlands and into Belgium called Fire and Food. Yeah, that Fire and Food magazine. We got a huge spread coming out. It starts in March. Yeah. And it's absolutely fantastic. I got to tell you, be be connected with our uh, YouTube channel if you're not already. I know some of you are watching from YouTube, but be connected there at Croy Valley because we've got a really awesome spread in this Fire and Food magazine that also includes a, a recipe and a video, and it's really cool, like fusion barbecue uh, that they're going to be promoting. We're going to be doing it every single episode or every single issue of that magazine coming up in all of 2024. So we're super stoked about our partnership with Fire and Food. Couldn't say enough awesome things about them yeah. and our entire team that's over there. So yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah, so that's kind of what's going on in exporting. Now I see, honey, that you are drinking out of a tumbler and I'm super curious to know yeah. what's in Lou's tumbler. It's beer. Is it? Is it beer? It's always, it's always beer. We gotta tell them the fine people what you've got going on in your tumbler. I really, this, I really like beer. This is another one of those little throwbacks to previous episodes. It is. It's always something different. But it, it, it but is. It's always beer. It is always beer. <laughs> what so, do you got today? Well, we were in Mexico, and my favorite beer that we had down in Mexico, mm -hmm. you know, was Pacifico. Okay, Pacifico. Yeah, it's just a really to, good pilsner. It, it really, doesn't, really good. To me, it doesn't sound like a really like authentic it is. Mexican beer. Well, yeah, it is. It's, it's from Mazatlan. <laughs> Steve Lauer wanted to know if private stock was in the tumbler. <laughs> it's not private stock. Wow, as that would found be out. a thing, yeah. Yeah, it's, quite, quite, it's, it's drinkable, but not this this much. It's a beer from Mazatlan. Some German immigrants moved over there. They started doing beer, and the really cool story is some surfers up in California rode in their van down there, like back in the 1970s. They found this beer. They brought it back up to California with them, and it kind of just exploded in the surfer community. So it's, it's a good beer. Melissa wants to know if you have a lime in there. I have an entire lime in there, <laughs> she yes. She does. <laughs> yes, Melissa knows how I roll. It's very good with lime. 
and, and Dan asked about Liftbridge. I have to mention Liftbridge oh, yeah. is a fantastic yeah. partner. They're a brewery out of Stillwater, Minnesota. They started their business just about the time that we did. And I really appreciate Dan bringing them up because there's probably going to be some Liftbridge in Lou's Tumblr oh, at I, some point I in time. I guarantee there will yeah. definitely be Liftbridge. There usually is like Monday through I, I normally have Wednesday. some farm girl on standby at home. <laughs> right, how's, Our, that, how's that dip going, Damon? The dip is going fantastic. I'm going to pull it out of the oven here. Let it cool off a bit. We're going to let it cool off just slightly. It's hot. We don't okay. want to burn ourselves. So now I want to remind you, this, this spinach and artichoke dip here is just a very basic recipe, but it is super, super tasty. It is fantastic. And it's four ingredients. Mm -hmm. Artichokes, spinach, uh, no, five, five ingredients, artichokes, spinach, cream cheese, Parmesan Romano blend, and the garlic barbecue booster. Five things, super simple. You can pick them up at any grocery store, and this is what we're looking at. Now, Look, I put them in there. We got somebody watching from Hungary. Hello. From Hungary? Wow. Holy tamale. too, my goodness gracious. No doubt. Well, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. We really, really do. all going to be tired at work tomorrow. <laughs> now, I want to show you this. Uh, Clint, can you get a close-up on me just stirring this around here? Do you see how stringy that cheese has become in here? That means that this is done. Now, if I wanted to eat this as is, I am perfectly fine to be able to eat this as a spinach and artichoke dip. It's fantastic as a dip for bread, for chips, for crackers, for raw vegetables, you name it. I'm telling you, this is one of the most fantastic and easiest recipes that you've ever had for spinach and artichoke dip. Clint's favorite way to have it is on raw broccoli. He loves raw broccoli. It's his favorite thing. If you guys ever want to bring Clint a present, just bring him a little baggie of a raw broccoli. A whole stock of broccoli. God, he, he, he would be just so happy. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he actually likes it, but you know, it is what it is. All right, you keep doing that. I'm gonna go back here and do some more prep work. On Start doing else. a little prep over yeah. there, okay? Yeah. So I'm gonna tell you, Drake says it looks bomb, and I'm telling you, Drake, he's my son, and and he knows it is the bomb because he's eaten it before. But it's very simple. You anyone can do this. Now this is this is a great dip, like I said, just for using in and of itself. But you can up the ante a little bit with Croy Valley flavors. I'm gonna show you how to do a couple of them here, okay? The first one is I'm gonna take some of this basic spinach and artichoke dip. I shouldn't call it basic. I should, I, I think on the website I call it classic. It's a classic, classic. spinach and artichoke dip, like okay? That. We're gonna do a couple of things with it. First one is we're gonna add Croy Valley's garlic buffalo sauce to this dip. And we're going to be making a buffalo chicken spinach and artichoke dip. So we'll add a goodly amount of buffalo sauce. We're going to add some smoked chopped chicken to the mix. Okay. However, or you can use a rotisserie chicken or whatever cooked chicken you'd like. We're going to add that in there and simply mix it up until you have enough sauce in there that this transforms into an orange hue on the dip. When it has an orange hue, you know that it's going to be really tasty with the buffalo sauce, but it's not going to be overpowering to the point where it's too spicy or too much buffalo. It's just the perfect blend. And I, I think this is about, I don't know, about... Eh, let's say a half a cup of buffalo sauce here, and maybe about a third of a cup of chicken, okay? So that's the first one. And bear with me because I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I've got a few things to do here. Okay, check this out. Tortilla chips, buffalo chicken. We're just gonna throw that in there. Buffalo chicken dip. Spectacular. There you go. There's the first iteration of what we can do with that spinach and artichoke dip that's a little different from the norm. Now, it's fantastic with chips, with bread, again, like I said, with 
vegetables, whatever you want to use it with. But this is a really simple presentation that you can give to any of your family and friends. And it's, it's, it's a no-brainer. Put a little drizzle of blue cheese sauce over the top or some blue cheese crumbles, and now you've got a buffalo blue cheese chicken spinach artichoke dip. It's a lot of words, There you too. go, guys. Look at that. It's fantastic. Simple. All right, let me set that down. We're going to move on to the next one. What's next? Well, you, you tell me, Lou. What do you got going on behind me? Well, I am on. working on some filling for this uh, these potato skins that I fried up. Okay. Oh, no. No, no, this one... See, this is live. Sorry. We rehearsed this <laughs> for, for three years. I failed. And still. Failed. It's okay. Okay, it's no, okay. no, no, no. This is going doing? with the spinach artichoke. It is. I it apologize. Is. Yep. We are going, we're going to Greece for this one. We're going to Greece? We what do we are. have going on in Greece, Lou? Well, we're going to take the spinach artichoke dip, and okay. we are going to mix it with a Greek booster. I'm sure you guys could have guessed that one there. The Croy Valley Greek Barbecue Booster? That's right. Holy tamale. Mikey says that that buffalo uh, chicken spinach artichoke dip would be great in tater skins. And I'm going to tell you, Mikey, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Wink, wink. All right. We're back to this one. Yep. Greek barbecue booster, okay? With that classic, with that classic uh, spinach and artichoke dip. We're going to mix that up. And what Lou's got going, did you mention exactly what you have going on back there? No, I did not. Okay. I'm pulling it right now, though. Lou is cooking up some Greek gyro meat, some Greek seasoned gyro meat. Got like that the, right there. There you go. Same sort of stuff that you get at Carnival or whatever, like that, that uh, Kronos brand sliced gyro meat. It's delicious. And in the other pan, she's got what? Some little tiny bits of naan bread. Tiny little naan bread. Yeah. What are we making with that one? We are going to put the spinach artichoke dip on top of the naan bread. Okay. And then we're going to throw that gyro meat on top of that. Okay. And then we're going to throw some pickled red onions on top. That sounds absolutely delicious. I'm not sure where the cameras are at here, uh, Mr. Clint with Clint Cam. Can you see this right here? Or do we need to move something out of the way? That's my question. Yeah, yell at us if we need to do things, Clint. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. All right. So we've got these tiny little naan breads right here, right? They're super cute. I've got a Greek seasoned spinach and artichoke dip yep. that we're going to use as a base. I'm going to move my potatoes out hey, of the way. Again, keeping things sanitary, Two we're going to put on some gloves because it's a lot easier for me to keep my hands clean and to make sure that none of my guests, there's no guests here tonight. but Clint's here. Clint's here. Make sure that nobody gets sick. We have sick. to protect Clint. <laughs> We're going to put a little dollop of that Greek seasoned spinach and artichoke dip. This is my favorite way to have eat. spinach artichoke dip, by the way. With the, anything with the Greek booster, I'm all over it. Dan Dickey says that there's no such thing as, uh, as uh, too much Croy Valley uh, garlic buffalo sauce. And I, I tend to agree. Yeah. I tend to agree, Dan. Oh, my goodness. These are adorable. Okay. So, I mean, again, perfect little appetizer. Like, these are fantastic little things that you can do. You're doing a great job. Thank you, hon. You're welcome. Okay. Yep. We're almost there. I'm going to wait until you finish, then I'll do another part. You're going to do the rest of it. I will. I'll finish do. it. Okay. Okay. All right, there you Super go. Super num nums. Greek barbecue, or Greek spinach and artichoke dip. There you right. go. And then we're just going to okay. throw a little bit of this meat right on top of there. This just, is, again, Greek gyro meat, like lamb beef mixture. Yep, just fried it in the pan back there with a little bit of butter, because butter. Hey, Jason, thanks for joining us. Yep. And then Appreciate on top, it. what do we got to go on top there, Damon? Pickled red onion. So how did you pickle those? Super easy. This is thinly sliced red onion right here. We added some champagne vinegar and a little bit of sugar and a pinch of salt. And it becomes a little, a little translucent. It becomes a little uh, flaccid, I should say. But it's super, super flavorful. So we'll top these gyro bruschettas with a little dusting yes. of the pickled red onion. Gives a little acidity to the dish. It sure does. We got a little. We got. Well, we got. One wants to on stay there. with its friends. <laughs> it does. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you, this is a great Greek bite right here. 
It's even made better if you want to go a little further and add something like Kalamata olives Ooh. or diced, uh, uh, diced uh, tomato to Some it. feta cheese, little maybe. little feta cheese drizzle, even a little tzatziki, but I don't think it's needed. There you go. There we go. There's number we, two. We just transformed that spinach and artichoke dip into a Greek presentation, a buffalo chicken presentation, mm -hmm. and I want to cover a couple of other quick things that you can do with it. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna grab this one because it's got Clint's favorite stuff in it. Okay, this right here, put, put it right here and let Clint zoom in on that real quick, yep. okay? This is the classic mm -hmm. spinach and artichoke dip that you can serve with toasted, uh, toasted baguette. You can use your, your vegetables, you can do this with tortilla chips, carrots, whatever. whatever. This is just yeah. a fantastic presentation that everyone will love. That's right. And Super I've got good. and I've got one more for you. Oh, we okay, got one so more. Much. Oh my gosh. Magic, magic of live TV. Whoa. Oh, look at that. Look at that one right there. This is a spinach and artichoke dip stuffed jalapeno popper that's wrapped in bacon, sprinkled with a little Croy Valley, Kansas. City barbecue rub mm -hmm. and served with a side of the blackberry ancho chili barbecue and wing sauce. Yeah. Again, just another really fantastic presentation. Instead of just using cream cheese, use something like this. It elevates the dish that much more. Look, we got so much going on here. Oh my gosh, we do. We we're do. Not even, we're not even done yet. Here we go. We're not even halfway, halfway wait, done. There, wait, there's more. Well, I have to tell you, <laughs> there is more. And and, and Adam's driving right now as he's watching us. He's about to eat the steering wheel, he says, because he's <laughs> so hungry. So Jeff Hires likes broccoli cam. <laughs> broccoli cam? Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So that's what we're doing with spinach and artichoke dip. Yep. And again, the recipe is already live. It is online at CroyValleyFoods.com. Clint can share the recipe if he hasn't already in the comments, but you can just head over to CroyValleyFoods.com, go into that recipes tab, bingo, boingo, search for bingo, it, whatever. Boingo. You're going to find our version of the most amazing classic Spanish and artichoke dip that you can transform into all sorts of fun foods. Shall we move on to potato skins? What? And then while we're doing a little potato skin prep, we can talk about a couple other things. Yeah. Or do you need more Moscato? Do you need a minute? I, I, okay, everybody just wait a second. I really need just to make sure on. that my original assessment on the Moscato report was accurate. That's what a good journalist does. Okay. Let me make Let's sure. Just double check. Hmm. Are we okay? Yep, I oh, think okay, I people. think I'm good. We can proceed. No Let's fake move news on. here. All right, cool. <laughs> I really do like that Moscato a lot. Oh goodness, it's delicious. Okay, Clint just shared uh, the recipe for that next level spinach and artichoke dip. So yeah, brings it no, to the next no, level. No, and be creative with it. Seriously, I I, I saw I, somebody yeah. earlier that said that they used the pineapple habanero oh. over the top of it. You could do garlic Dude. ginger teriyaki on there. Yeah, I would you could love, do whatever you want. Love to see what Seriously. our creative little people come up with. Post some pics and let us know. Okay. I love it. I love it. Okay. Right. We're going to refer to our cheat sheet here, and I'm going to tell you, before we move on to the potato skins, potato because skins? they're really super delicious, and we've already cooked them. We're already, yeah. We've already cooked we them here. We got the hard part done. Is it, we want to talk about a little food sport update. Oh, I love food sport. If you know Croy Valley, yeah. you know that we are huge champions of food sport. And what we mean by food sport, if you don't really know, is competition cooking. That includes steak contests and pizza contests and barbecue contests and rib contests. Chili. You name it. Yeah. We if if there's if you can be competitive and cook a, a rice crispy, I will be in it, hundred percent. And so will the majority of our team Croy Valley, our team Croy Valley, our folks from all over the world that again, enjoy the same things that we do, and they're great, fantastic proponents of the brand, and they use our products, and, and, and you should too, uh, every they're day. They're insanely talented. They're very, very talented. Dan so, Wright would like a shirt that says Bingo Boingo. I think that's a new <laughs> thing for me. Bingo Boingo, Croy Valley's got it. Yeah. Oh, don't encourage him. <laughs> <laughs> Your sister wants to know if she should test the Moscato. I'm going to tell you, Melissa, you absolutely should. This will be gone before you could even drive here, <laughs> but go to, your, go to the local store and buy some yourself. <laughs> go buy some yourself. So, all right, all right let's, let's... Food sport. Food sport, okay. 
Yeah. So where we are in food sport, we just want to touch on this. We're not going to go, yeah, super, go deep, super deep dive, but um, I, think it's, I think it's really fun because currently the biggest thing that we have going on in food sport is that we are the title sponsor, like I mentioned earlier, of the Steak Cook-Off Association's World Ancillary Championship, which happens in about three weeks. Is it that close? Oh, goodness. Three or I'm four not weeks ready. In, in Fort Worth, Texas. And what that means for Croy Valley is that everybody who is cooking one of those competitions has to use some of the Croy Valley products. Mm -hmm. Now, it's very befitting that we are cooking Ansel, or I'm sorry, we're cooking appetizers here today. That's because that's the opening round. That's the opening round. Yes. We've got some pictures that we can pull up here. Oh, yeah. And I just want to showcase how fun this is. If you take a look at any of the pictures down below here, these are folks from all over the world, literally so cool. all over the world that are utilizing our products, our barbecue and wing sauce line and our Croy Valley Honey Dijon barbecue and brat sauce. They have to be used in either the opening round or in the final round of this major competition, which is one of the largest in food sport that, that attracts people from all over the globe. And we are so happy to see these photos from everybody from all corners of the world that are using our product and practicing yeah. with them. And maybe some of them are getting introduced to us for the very first time. It is, I mean, it is, it's very humbling because we've been so fortunate to be in this position where we can do this and connect with people. Yeah. But man, oh man, I mean, you, you can see pics there. I mean, this is just a little tiny little smattering. We see them all over the internet. Folks from, from uh, the, the Netherlands to Germany to New Zealand to all corners of the U.S. And, and Canada and Mexico that are using our products. And that is just super, super cool. Yeah, we really appreciate that. It's, I, uh, we hope you guys are having fun with our products because we are certainly having fun making them for you. Yeah, yeah. And, and I will say also that just coming up for anyone that's watching here, because we have that uh, world championship competition coming up, which is opening round is an, is an appetizer challenge. And the, the finals is going to be the Croy Valley world burger championships, utilizing that barbecue. Look at that. Look at that world burger sticker? championships right there. Nice. Utilizing that barbecue and brat sauce. Uh, we will be doing tons of live streaming when we go down <laughs> there. So, so make sure to keep, keep tabs on Just us it because clean. <laughs> it'll be it'll be a ton of fun. It'll be a ton of yeah, fun. Yeah, Clint so. and I are going to be bebopping around and interviewing people and just having a really good time. So. Yeah, yeah. One other thing that I'm going to mention in food sport is the World Food Championships. Oh my! Again, if you followed us at any given time, you know well enough that the World Food Championships or WFC is one of the f most favorite things that we do all year long. I've always mentioned that it is the pinnacle of food sport for me. Um, I've been fortunate enough. To be, to be the world sandwich champion the last two years in a row. And what that means is that I still have a competition coming up in April. I think it's like two weeks away or something. I, I don't even know, March, April. It's, it's after. It's a bit. It's, it's a, a bit. Okay, but it's coming up. Fast. It's coming up. It's, yeah, yeah. So the, the, the world food championships, I have to go to what's called the final table where I compete against like 10 other champions of their category. You do. So the title of world food champion and a $150,000 top prize. And last year I took second place in the world. And this year I'm taking first. Sorry, John, John, yeah. Mc, John McFadden. He's the, he's the reigning champ. He's back again. He's, he's a super awesome chef. <laughs> It's really good. Uh, but I really, I'm, it's coming up. It's going to be awesome. We'll be doing all sorts of live streaming from down there and all sorts of content as well. So just follow along with us. It's really fun. It's really cool. All right. So we move on to the potato skins. Let's talk some potato skins, shall we? Let's talk potato. Heck yeah. Heck yeah, potato skins. Yeah, you got a job to do. Oh, your, my goodness gracious. It's time for down. me to glove up. Glove up and make some things. All right. All right. We've got to show the people what we're doing. Yeah, we do. Okay. So with the potato skins, remind everyone what you did here earlier, please. <laughs> so we just scooped out, we pre-cooked the potatoes, we scooped out the potato skins. I feel like it's fun saying potato now. Mm -hmm. It's a very Midwest word, mid potato. Um, and then we <laughs> Potato. Potato. And then we deep fried them. 
so that they're, they're nice and firm and they'll hold a filling really well. So Damon's gonna make a really simple filling and it's... Oh, I wanna show you... So good, so, so good. One of the most amazing things. There's a hack for you guys. It's a super awesome hack, okay? I got an avocado here, right? I do have an avocado. You saw I just split that. I'm gonna take the pit out, get rid of that. We don't want that. Nice, beautiful, ripe avocado. I'm gonna score this both sides. You doing okay. good? Yep. Hey, thank you. Don't score yourself. No. Just the avocado. And now I'm gonna scoop out that avocado pulp just with a fork here. Put all of the little meat inside that tray or inside that bowl. And I'm gonna show you the easiest way to make guacamole that you have ever seen. I, okay. I, I can eat a lot of guacamole. We, we just came back from Mexico, and let me tell you, the guacamole down there is legit. The totally avocados legit. are like the size of my head. They are, they're amazing. They're fantastic. Okay. I've got an avocado in here. I've got Croix Valley Southwest Booster. These two ingredients right here. That's it. That is all you need for the most amazing guacamole you have ever had. Now, I'll tell you again, because we've done a lot of travel down to the origination, down to Mexico, of guacamole. About, like, how, how good the guacamole is compared to the Mexican guacamole? No, what I'm gonna say is that a lot of times in American restaurants, you'll see guacamole that is mixed with garlic no. and onion no. and tomato no. and all sorts of other ingredients. No. And I'm gonna tell you, when you're eating some authentic guac, you're eating some seasoned avocado, and typically the really good restaurants down there will serve this with a side or a pile of all those other ingredients. They're yeah. not mixing them in. This is the basic recipe right here. And let me tell you, this right here, if you, Clint, did you get a, did you get a good close up on how easy this was? Two ingredients. This is one of the most amazing guacamoles you will ever have. The, the onion, the garlic, the tomato, be damned. You can put don't them aside, it. you don't need them. If you like them, nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But it's this really right good. here Easy. is a super basic guacamole. And if you're gonna have it sitting out for a little while, you got like a little party going on, you could throw a little bit of something acidic in there, like some lime. Oh, yeah. Squeeze because the lime it's juice. It's going to prevent the avocado from browning. Yep. I mean, yep. it's not going to change. I mean, it's going to give you a little bit more of a bright flavor, but it's also going to make it look really, really nice for a longer period of time. I Absolutely. like a little bit of lime in my guacamole. I also, we had at least one or two places that had cilantro in there as well. Yeah, that's a good one too. Yep. But this so, is a good base recipe, along with any other base recipe that we ever have on our website. You know, you can see like we're starting with one variation and you could add a lot of other ingredients to really make it your own. And that's right. kind of the benefit here. So fill her up. We did the potato skins earlier. I'm gonna show you one preparation on potato skin here potato. that we really, really like. Yeah. Potato <laughs> is a Southwest guacamole potato skin. Yes. and and. This is a Southwest booster, not a Mexican booster. This is Correct. not the kind of seasoning you would find in Mexico. It's similar, but it's more of like a Southwest Tex-Mexi. This is Tex-Mexi. Yes, because yes. as we were informed by our friends down in Mexico, traditional Mexican seasoning does not contain what, Damon? Cumin. Cumin, no. Nope, that is not at not all. Not at all. Y'all might think that it's in there, but trust me, it's not. I like it, so it's really good, but <laughs> that, you're not gonna find that in traditional nope. Mexican nowhere, seasoning. Nowhere near it, nowhere near. But it's yummy. So I'm gonna take that avocado, this one here, uh, makes approximately enough for two whole potatoes and or four potato skins. Yep. Adjust so the recipe you don't accordingly. Need these two. I'll get those out yeah, of the you way. can get rid of those. We'll a save those for later. You made extra potatoes. Oh, I, I didn't got need excited. Them. I'm sorry. All right, okay. all right. So we're gonna add the uh, guacamole mm -hmm. to these potato skins. Are Very we gonna simple. top them with grasshoppers? No, we're gonna top them with oh, crispy uh, bacon, crispy smoked bacon. This is a little bit of akin to what you would find in a traditional. Uh, potato skin that would might have like you know uh, cheese and and sour cream or what have you, but this is just a really nice 
southwest version of that potato skin. Chicharrones or uh, like a pork rind would be great on top too. Those are very, Fantastic. very, very popular down Fantastic. in Mexico. And having those on top with that little bit of crunch would be probably more appealing to your guests than grasshoppers. It, depending upon <laughs> who you are, so. Yeah. There, there is a Southwest, there we go. There's a Southwest, uh, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> avocado, guacamole, potato skin. Fantastic. Super easy, but the potato skin, very much like a lot of the things that we do, is a blank canvas for adding all sorts of different flavors. So I wanna show you a couple of other preparations that by the magic of live uh, Facebook, YouTube, TV, that we had gotten done here. So here's a couple of other things that you can do with that very simple potato skin that gets deep fried and, and, and is toasted golden brown. The first one I've got here, and again, the recipe for this is online at croybellyfoods.com. This is a teriyaki stir fry potato skin. And what we've used on here is we have a- Teriyaki stuff? We have teriyaki stuff okay. for sure, like Lou said. <laughs> But the base of this right here is a, is a chive and herb cream cheese. We add some stir fried vegetables, which you can utilize, uh, you know, broccoli, carrots, onion, uh, pepper, snow peas, mushrooms, whatever you like. Any of that. Put a little drizzle of the Croix Valley garlic jujur teriyaki mm -hmm. wing sauce on there, and some crispy fried. Uh, wonton strips that have been seasoned with the garlic ginger teriyaki wing booster. Yep. Super awesome. There you got Asian flair on a potato skin, which is just absolutely fantastic. These are the ones the kids are going to like. Yeah, uh, these ones, this is a family favorite right here. This is an Italian pepperoni uh, potato skin. What you do there is you put a little bit of mozzarella cheese in the bottom, put some marinara sauce, some tiny little cute pepperoni pieces, a little bit of uh, Croix Valley Italian barbecue booster, and a little uh, Parmesan cheese on top, and bingo, it tastes like pizza in a potato bowl. Yes, fantastic. Now going back to a comment that we saw earlier. Oh, way back when. Way back when, when we were talking about that garlic <laughs> buffalo mm. Uh, chicken, uh, potato, or I'm sorry, spinach so artichoke. So many dip, words. Is that we said, boy, those would be great in a tater skin, right? Well, there they are. Here you go. Look at that. Here you go, right there. There's buffalo, chicken, spinach, artichoke, potato skins topped with some blue cheese crumbles. It is a mashup of flavors unlike anything you've probably ever eaten before. And I'll tell you what, it is absolutely fantastic and so easy to do. Again, just this one preparation, making these potato skins, they become a literal boat to hold all sorts of flavor. A boat of nummy, if you will. I love nummy boats. All right, now look what we got. I do. We made, we've got too many here. We've got all sorts. So, and, and again, Grandma. the recipe, uh, the recipe on this is online at croyvalleyfoods.com. I'm sure Clint will post it. He just did. Clint's uh, so good. Look at that. More tasty treats for you. It says, "Holy tamale." Our That's some fantastic eat good stuff. Good tomorrow. Look at all this. I know it's really good stuff. Really good stuff. So, a couple of other things we want to talk about, Lou. Um, how about? How about, you know, I mean, we've been cooking all of these things right here. How about we talk about what other people have been cooking? You mean, what's cooking in Croy Valley Nation? I don't know. What, what? What's been cooking in Croy Valley Nation? Oh my gosh, so much. We have three years to cover. How much time do you guys have? <laughs> we are not going back three years for this <laughs> because there's no way I would be able to keep up. But we've got some amazing dishes that a lot of our folks out there are cooking. The, the, I just wanted to highlight a few of them just really for the sake of showcasing the versatility of what we've got going on here. Now, the first one, why don't you step over here so I don't know if they can, they can see you uh, oh, well Are enough. they putting them over there? They in are the magic air. Is that where it's are going, over there, Clint? Yes. Okay. So the first picture <laughs> that we've got, I'm going to use my cheat sheet Look here. Look at the paper, honey. Because I can't actually see what's on screen right yeah, now. We're we just. It's like it's like we're the weatherman. We're like, oh, there's a cold <laughs> front coming in tonight. And okay, who's first? Okay, the, the first one is Jason Black. <laughs> the picture that we've got up here from Jason is what he calls an easy midweek meal. Now Jason oh, is yeah, one of our Croy Valley uh, team members, 
And this was just a fantastic item that just showcases how simple and, and easy it is to utilize Croy Valley mm -hmm. to impart flavor into your meals. He utilized the poultry booster oh, poultry on top booster. of a chicken breast mm -hmm. and put it on top of a lettuce mix with some dried cranberries, a little bit of Colby Jack cheese, some cucumber and uh, tomato and crouton. And seriously, that's like an an under 500 calorie meal yep. that anyone can make any given day of the week. It was just absolutely fantastic. Uh, Jason did a great job. And, and again, it just showcases kind of that versatility. So if we move to the next one up for bed, <laughs> this is... This was, this was a favorite of mine. I, oh. I mean, really a favorite of mine. This one comes from Rob Meyer. He's one of, our, one of our pro team members out of Wisconsin. Oh, yeah, this one was good. This is a homemade Italian sausage that he used Dang, the Rob. Croy Valley <laughs> Italian barbecue booster with. Yeah. And he wrapped it in prosciutto. Oh. He put it on top of a deep fried like hot dog bun that used the garlic oh. booster and some cheeses. It's a it's it's a nod to the Holter bun, yeah. which is in my new burger uh, cookbook, which was released just before Thanksgiving. If you haven't seen it yet, go to Amazon or Croy Valley Foods. You'll find an amazing book with all sorts of ideas. Oh, he, um, he just went all the way with all the things. Yeah, and then he's using garlic booster to like you know add peppers and onions on mm -hmm. there and and deep fried uh, uh, onions and and oh, he's, yeah. I mean like, seriously, I just I really loved this one, especially because of the bun and that Italian booster was designed specifically. Yep to be added to ground pork for the the reason, for the purpose of making Italian sausage which is exactly what Rob did. I mean that's like it's it a for throwback its intended purpose. Oh, I know. Good I job, Rob. I love it. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> I really love it. So let's move on to another one here now. We're going to get a little bit more complex, okay? He does we're so complex. We're he blows starting my mind. We're starting to ramp things up to show that you can go from super simple to, hmm, I'm going to think about this, to, holy cow, what can I do with this? Yeah. Check out what Jeffrey DeQuant did. Jeffrey. This is a, this is a uh, uh, sushi that he made out of, out of fresh salmon. Wow. That's all about the garlic ginger teriyaki, which mm -hmm. we used earlier here today. He took the, the, the raw salmon and made a tartare with the garlic ginger teriyaki wing booster, he stuffed it inside a roll of sushi rice, put a topping of fresh sliced salmon, which he torched with a, with, with a uh, uh, you know, butane torch. And you'll see these videos later. We'll, we'll put a, some of this yeah. stuff out on our, on, our, on our social media. And then topped it with garlic ginger teriyaki. It was flame kissed salmon sushi roll. It looks absolutely amazing, and it is just taking some of those simple flavors and adding them to basic ingredients and creating an elevated portion that is beyond what most people are going to find even in a really awesome restaurant. So yeah. great job, Jeffrey. And he's one of our pro team members from the Netherlands, by the way. This guy knows his food. I like those people from the Netherlands. Speaking of the Netherlands. Oh, we're moving one on. Of our, one of our... One of our Awesome protein members, Andre, Andre Grungo. Hi, He's Andre. on us right now. Hi, hi, Andre. Seriously, it's got to be like three in the morning or something. Jeepers. I can't even believe you're awake right now. But I know. thank you for joining us. We're moving to the next one right here. Hey, look, it's Andre. It's Andre. <laughs> it's Andre. Thank you again. Andre, I have to say, now we see pictures from lots of people all over the place. And we really appreciate everyone using their products. And I love the creativity that people have. But... Look at this thing. Andre just blows our mind. Unbelievable. By the way, Lisa Landucci, she's, uh, she's a second cousin. She's joining us from uh, Luca, Italy right now. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate Cheers you joining. Cheers with the Moscato, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, back to Andre, seriously. Oh. This is absolutely fantastic. It's a ceviche with avocado and shrimp, tomato, cilantro, a garlic buffalo sauce, kettle drive, pineapple habanero. Um, I, I can't even tell you. There, there's there's the, this twill. Clint asked me earlier. He's like, "What's that little thing that looks like that looks like seaweed or like a, a coral on there?" It's 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 a really cool technical yeah. uh, uh, you know element that he's added to it. It's called twill. Very very awesome. I tell you, 
if this wasn't something that you could find in a five-star restaurant or a Michelin-star restaurant, I don't know what's on their menu right. because it yeah. was the flavor of Troy <laughs> Valley that, that added to, that heightened this mm -hmm. thing, but it was the talent of Andre himself oh. who made yeah. this phenomenal. It was one of my, the most favorite pictures that I had seen yet because yeah. it wasn't Incredible. just a burger or some ribs. This is this is next level chef stuff right here. I know it makes me so glad that we compete in the U.S. and not in Europe. <laughs> it seems like that's a lot harder, you guys. Yeah, it was absolutely, <laughs> absolutely fantastic. You stay on your side of the pond, Andre. Yeah, yeah don't, he's actually coming to the world <laughs> I know. steak championships, and we have to compete against him. Oh, well, I don't, shortly. I'm not competing. I'm just going to walk around and look at all you people. Well, Andre, buddy, <laughs> best of luck to both of us. Oh, I tell you. So pretty crazy stuff. So that's what's been cooking in Cry Valley Nation. We, I, I love seeing that. I had a lot of fun. But speaking of Cry Valley Nation, I'm going to tell you, we, we've got this Facebook group. Um, I don't know if we shared this there yet or not, but we will. So the Citizens of Croy Valley Nation is a Facebook group that I would encourage everyone to be a part of if you're not. And the reason why what? is because, because we have this awesome Highly coveted Croy Valley Tumblr. You can't buy these. And I'm telling you right right now, it's Tumblr time. <gasps> it is Tumblr time. I love Tumblr we time. are gonna give away a highly coveted big frig big frig Croy Valley Tumblr to one lucky person every time we go live. We've been doing this for years. Uh, when we weren't live, we still gave them away, but we've been doing this every month, and it is only available to those people who are posting pictures on the interwebs and utilizing the hashtag Croy Valley Nation, yep. showcasing the creativity and the fantastic food that you're making. But there's been some changes recently with how Facebook and Instagram and yeah, whatnot does their little hashtags. So, so starting right now, the only way you can get one is by actually posting in the citizens of Croy Valley Nation yep. because otherwise we can't find it. We can't see what you're doing. It's yeah. nothing against you. We we it just makes, need to be able to find Clint's it. It makes Clint's life a lot harder, and we don't we don't want to make Clint work too hard. <laughs> we already pay him like pennies on the dollar. <laughs> it's true. So you know if we can He's make his life for punishment. just a little bit easier, that'd be great. <laughs> so we're gonna give away a tumbler. <laughs> what we're doing. What we're doing this month is we're giving away an a green Ooh, a green nice. tumbler. That's, Look at how beautiful that is. That's pretty good. Oh, you want to get a close up on that, Clint? I don't know if you can see it. Look at how pretty. <laughs> Tanya that said, is. "If Tyler ever wins, his name is pronounced Tanya." <laughs> <laughs> Look at this beautiful matte green tumbler with nice. the emblazoned Croy Valley logo. Again, highly coveted mm -hmm. because since the inception of these things. We don't just give them away. No, nope, we don't. We don't them sell them. You can't. You, you got to win them. Can't buy them. Nope. Yep. So, I'm going to tell you, without further ado. Do you know who won? I sure do. I don't. I do. I don't think you guys told me. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. Are you? Our winner of the highly coveted Croy Valley Tumblr S this month. So excited. Is Miss Lori Oswald from the Cedar, Wisconsin? Oh, you bet, Lori. Congratulations. Lori has been a fan of Croy Valley for quite some time. She posts a lot of pictures of she her does. food that she's making on on uh, on her Facebook and, and Instagram. Lori. She's watching. She's, is she watching? Yeah. That's a different Lori. Oh, that's a different Lori. No, no, no. Sorry. So she's. I hope that Lori's watching, or she'll at least see it shortly. But Lori Oswald has been a fantastic fan. She has. And she even made a drive up here. I, I honestly don't know where Nacita, Wisconsin is. I know it's a little far from here, but she made a drive up to our uh, Croy Valley World Headquarters here sometime this spring mm -hmm. or last spring once we moved in just so she could see the place and take a picture with us. And it was a fantastic, awesome visit. Uh, That's she's cool. a she's a, a great she's a, a, a great supporter and does a great job and she's Lori look fabulous this, with this is your tumbler if anybody wants to win one of these again just please make sure to tag us in your posts post a picture of the food that you're cooking in citizens of Croy Valley post it in citizens of Croy Valley Nation join us on that Facebook group and this could be yours For next the month low low price of nothing of nothing yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs>
I mean, there might be a little price. They still have to buy like some Croy Valley yeah. stuff and use it, but yeah, you know, well, whatever. Yeah. It's all good. Still, a lot better than, you know, a lot better than not having one. Dan said it's a great vessel, and seriously, it is. We would not be without our Croy Valley tumblers like for the last 15 years. So. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. mm. That's not Moscato. No. That's beer, though. It's for sure beer. <laughs> yeah, it is. So let's just talk about real quick. We're going to wrap things up shortly. Not yeah, yet, we but we're going to wrap things here. up shortly. Let's keep her moving. Because we really, really appreciate you guys coming and, and checking us out here tonight. But let's talk about what's coming up in 2024 kind of for, for Croy Valley and what we've got going on. Well, you talked about the final table for I did. World Food. Yep. Then we have the regular World Food Championships coming up in November. We'll be yep. competing at in Indianapolis. Yep. Uh, we have Smoke Slam that you and a bunch of the Croy Valley people are going to be doing in Memphis. Yes, let me talk about that real quick. There's this thing called Smoke Slam. It's a big barbecue competition. It'll be the first one uh, or the inaugural one that's going on in Memphis, Tennessee this year. And tons of Team Croy Valley are going to be down there in Memphis with me uh, cooking whole hog and, and, and pork ribs and pulled pork as well as like seven or eight different types of categories like duck and beef and, and, and dessert and all sorts of stuff. It's yep. just going to be amazing, absolutely amazing. And I'm going to be spearheading that effort myself with the rest of the team because what are you doing? I am going to be up in Montreal, Canada at a trade show. Eh? Eh? Oh, yeah, I like, I like Canada. I'm excited to go up there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to be up there at a trade show promoting our products and helping our Canadian distributor to continue to push Cry Valley up in Canada. It's been such a great area for us. So I'm going to go up north, and you're going to go south. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. What else we got going on? Oh, I uh, right after we get back from the World Steak Championships, I'm going to be home for a couple days, and then I'm going to hop a plane to London. All by yourself? Yeah, I'm allowed to go by myself. It's okay. Yeah, that's okay. There'll be there'll be representatives from the state of Wisconsin to supervise. What me. are you doing in London, England? I am going to be at the International Food Expo, so I'll be exhibiting Ooh. there. It's ever since Brexit has happened, London. And Sounds super fancy. Very fancy. Yeah, yeah that whole mm. UK has kind of become its own area. So yeah. while we have coverage in Europe, we don't have coverage in the UK. So I'm going to go there and see if I can try and figure out a way to get us into that area of Europe as well. Well, best of luck to you. I am very excited. I really want to go to the Doctor Who Museum. I love Doctor you're, Who. You're supposed to say best of luck to me because I'm going to be competing at that same time. Oh, I mean, yeah, good luck to you too. Hey, thanks. I'm going to go see it. Doctor Who. That sounds really awesome. Doesn't it? In addition to that, we've got a trade show that we're going to be doing in Chile mm -hmm. in October. We're mm -hmm. going to be back in Germany this year yep. at Spoga, which is this giant trade show that we're doing with our folks over there um, and, and a, a grill company. Um, we're going to go do the World Chili Championships again. That's one of our favorites down yeah. in Myrtle Beach, which is lovely. I won it one year. I know. I'm going to do it again. Nuh-uh. <laughs> we just have a lot of things going on with food sport and exporting. And again, just like seriously, can't thank you all enough for being a part of our journey yep. and joining us. So it's been pretty awesome. It's been all, it's been really awesome. So I don't know if there's much more to talk about. I think it's time that we can wrap this up. I mean, yeah, we got to eat all this food. We do. We have a lot of food here, and Clint has really got his eye on that raw broccoli he over. I'll does. tell you that. Yay, broccoli. Clint. I'll, I'll tell you guys, I want to just say thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us on Croy Valley Live. Again, it's been like three years since we've done this, and it was such an amazing experience to come back and be able to kind of share our little story and what we've got going on here right now with yes. everybody here. Yep, absolutely. If there's something you guys want to see us cover or talk about or questions you have for us, like throw them out in the comments or anywhere and let us know what you want us to to do. Absolutely. We'll, we'll do this we'll stuff cover for it. you. We'll cover it. We're trying to make sure that people understand that, you know, cooking is something you can do with family and friends and it doesn't have to be complicated. As long as you've got a couple of ingredients that really amp up the flavor, that's all you really need, a little bit of basic knowledge. So our next Croy Valley Live is going to be on March uh, 21st at 7 p.m. where you can join us here again. And thank you for joining us again this year. I'll tell you, as always, see you around the grill.
All right, man, where are those jalapeno poppers? I, I gotta need eat some, some of those that. potato skins. Oh, those are freaking delicious. I'm almost out of beer, too. I think I need some more. I'm gonna down this bottle of wine before <laughs> we're done tonight.